Hello and welcome to the Irish Angle on Jump To It. Uh, we've got a special this week. We're going to look at Galway and try and pick you a few winners. And we've got a special guest as well, Gavin Lynch. Gavin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Vincent. Thank you. Now, and Johnny Ward is here as well as usual with me, um, my usual sidekick. So hopefully we'll, we'll have a bit of fun going through this. First of all, Gavin, look, it's, it's great to have you on board. Uh, you're a national hunt expert, no doubt about it, with your previous form on Cheltenham. You've done very well the last few years tipping winners. So hopefully you'll find something for us in Galway. Um, sure. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to talk to you about is your Coast to Curra cycle, which you've been an instigator for this. It's been a fantastic um, vehicle for raising money in aid of Cancer Trials Ireland. And your own mum had the same um, issue going back with pancreatic cancer to Pat Smullen that uh, was the catalyst for you to start this. It's in your third year this year. It starts next month, is it? Yeah, it's on August the 26th. Um, yeah, my mum sadly passed away 10 years ago from pancreatic cancer and then when Pat did his race, I wasn't in the Curra that day, but I decided to go and maybe raise a few quid. And <clears throat> coming out of COVID, cycling was very, very popular. So, and I do a bit myself. And uh, we had the charity cycle. Johnny Ward there, the great man, took part two years ago. Uh, last year, we extended it. The Curra went, uh, got behind it. And last year, we had a, an auction and a lunch as well. And also this year, we have the cycle, the lunch, the auction. And we also have a charity race over 12 furlongs. So the day is growing and growing. It's now not only the... Coast Curra Charity Cycle, it's also the Pat Smullen uh, Race Day in Aid of Cancer Trials Ireland. So already it's become the biggest charity day in Irish racing. And in two years, we've raised over 350 grand, which is great. So this year, we hope to get through the half a million barrier, which would be super. That's unbelievable money now, in fairness. Look, full credit. I, I know myself, I organized one charity event going back about 10 or 12 years ago uh, for motor neuron disease. And the amount of organization that goes in behind the scenes here is unbelievable. I can only imagine... Yeah. Don't know how there you find time to look at the horses. Yeah, yeah, no, there was a lot of organising because uh, this year we're going to six race courses and and my glare as well, where Pat uh, rode so often for for Denver Weld and my glare. And then when we get to the car, as I said, then we've got the the lunch, the charity race, and the auction. So uh, we'll have some brilliant auction items. We have some very good ones already. So keep an eye out for that in the next few weeks. Great stuff. Look, the best of luck with it anyway. All right, we're going to move on to Galway. Big week, Johnny. This is your side of the country. You should know plenty about this now. <laughs> should yeah should. <laughs> i've so many so many stories of galway like falling in love in galway falling out of love in galway you know having um good winners i i, I once uh owned a horse running in galway running in wolverhampton that's um the, the taxi gave me a tip for the horse even though i didn't have word for myself uh, he ended up getting up on the line i hadn't been backed and everyone in galway had him backed ray mulvaney told me last week the biggest payout he ever had as a bookmaker was when Miss United won uh, the following week in Galway um, she, she won in Goodwood as as the away meeting so it's uh, that's a great week and you know I walked the track last week for all the rain that they've had it was beautiful grounds and um, I mean I was did a, did a couple of things for race TV around Galway and like the, the atmosphere in the in the town last week without people going racing um it's phenomenal buzz it's uh it's a long week as well uh, Vinny. it's important to gamble responsibly it is one of these week long festivals just like the guts of 50 odd races um so uh yeah gamble responsibly but lots of fun and winners to be had I'm glad you put that in there yeah that's the that's the one thing okay um looking at it gavin you've been to galway you're telling me you were there you were a kid your dad used to drag you there every year is that right <laughs> yeah when we were very young <clears throat> we uh, got brought either to killarney for four or five days in the summer or else we were brought to galway and uh, by pure coincidence uh, there was racing on every day when we were down there so um yeah fond memories of galway love the place love the city it's always full of life no matter when you go down there and as Johnny said, this is a long, long week, with the ground being soft and heavy. Uh, I think it's going to be a bookies week, so we all have to be patient. Yeah, now that's the one thing. There has been a lot of rain over the weekend since you were there, yeah. Johnny. They've had 20-something millimetres um, yesterday. So we're, we're dealing with soft ground on the National Hunt track and heavy ground starting off on the flat. So with the rain that's due, they're due another band of rain to come in Wednesday. So they'll struggle to get through the week, you'd imagine, but let's hope they do. Right, let's have a look at it. Have we got any winners from me? Start off Monday. I, I think I've found one. You tell me if I'm wrong here. There's a three-year-old handicap over a mile and a half, the 750 on Monday. And there's a horse in it called Expelliarmus, which is Harry Potter's signature spell, I believe. And <laughs> um, she she has to have a huge chance. I, I can't believe the price she is this morning. She's as big as 10 to 1 with Bet365. Um, she's a half-brother to common practice, which did nothing until stepped up to this distance. That was also a McManus and Joseph O'Brien horse beaten ahead in this race last year and then went on to win at the meeting in heavy ground at the October meeting, I think it was. And then the same race, 
Three years ago, they did another similar type, Flying Scotsman. Also, JP McManus and Joseph O'Brien stepped up and trip, won this race in 2020, came out the next day and won again. I, I think this looks nailed on for this in the, in the sense that it's, it looks like a real one that's been uh, targeted for this race, obviously. Should the whole family go for it? The whole, all the connections want this race. So I can't believe they're going 10 to 1. What do you think, Gavin? Is that, I know flat isn't your thing, but... Yeah, but I, I went and had a look at that horse, actually, and a uh, lovely run in Navan, uh, Declan McDonough Road. It wasn't knocked yeah. about, stayed on very, very well at the death over 10 furlongs. Got trapped back down to eight furlongs the last time. The curl went off favourite. Never really put into the race as such, but I suppose slightly disappointing. Uh, generally, um, that owner's colours, first time in a handicap, would be my cup of tea, but I'd imagine today is a is a go day. Um, it's off a nice rate, and it's stepping up and trip. Ground should suit you. I wouldn't put you off. Yeah, the, the run in Navin particularly, if you look back at that, that mile and a quarter race, if anyone gets a chance to have a look at it, if you add another two furlongs to that, it wins a minute, doesn't it? It was, it was storming home at the end. And also he was ducking and weaving a little bit in and out, which is always a sign. Always a sign is right. I think there's plenty of signs here for me. Uh, Johnny, do you look at that or do you want anything else you fancy on the opening day? Yeah, I like I, I just to reiterate what Gavin said, particularly over over jumps. Don't like back in those colours in a handicap um, at all first time. But um, as you mentioned, it's it's a nice pedigree. Uh, if you stay a mile and two with Navin, you'll basically stay a mile and a half nearly anywhere else. As much as Galway stiff, Navin is is proper stiff. Um, I know Tom Gibney um, trains relatively close to to Gavin's neck of the woods. He's a big fan of Booyah, and Tom's horse are in good form. I, I would have some reservations about the trip for Booyah. Um, when I what, what was it, Ballinor was a mile and one and a half. He's quite a powerful horse. He can get quite worked up beforehand, and they have to kind of keep a lid in him. But they to rock up here. Um, uh, you know, kind of seven days later after Ballon Robe um, is interesting. I, I, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Kaji Star is like 20, 20, 22 to one looking this morning. His horse by Seed the Stars, lovely, lovely pedigree, and looked like he wanted a trip at Roscommon the last day. Um, I'd probably be inclined to back him at the prices, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a banger of a day. I suppose the, the main talking point really for me, Vinny, is that Dermot Well doesn't have a run on the two-year-old maiden. Yeah, yeah, but he said very few winners or very few runners at the meet in the last few years. He there was a time he blanket bombed it, wasn't there? For twenty odd years, he was doing that. He doesn't have the horses anymore. I don't think he doesn't seem to target it the same way. Um, be interesting to see how he always comes out with a couple of winners during the week. You you would you wouldn't doubt that. But at the same time, it looks to be Willie Mullins is the new king of the the hoop down down in Galway. What about him in the opening race, Gavin? Um. Hell of, a, hell of a horse on pedigree alone, but didn't didn't exactly um, set the world alight when it ran yeah. Alan Robe in a bumper, wasn't it? Yeah, no, uh, Brad Pitt for a dad, and um, <laughs> I'm not sure who for a mum, but uh, any power, obviously, but uh, like fantastic breed, uh, mystical power, was, I suppose, more workmanlike than impressive the last day in the bumper. Uh, gets a bit of weight off the top uh, five in the race. I don't know, at five to four, is probably a little bit short for me. I'm not going to back that first time over hurdles. Um, I think that it has to improve a good bit from from Ballon Robe to to win today, but maybe it'll win. But I won't back that a five to four. No. Yeah, it seems to be very weak on the exchanges this morning. Everywhere the bookies are are all pushing it out odds against, and there seems to be money for the second and third favourites. Um, it was one for me. You'd like to see it over hurdles, obviously. Like being being um a son of any power could be absolutely anything in time, but the the first run didn't exactly set the world alight. Uh, anything else for you on the first day? What about the big GPT handicap? Is, Anything spark yeah. there, Gavin? Yeah, I think I'd be against teed up. Uh, a couple of friends of mine said, wait till you see the run in tomorrow. It was really eye-catching. I looked at it this morning. I didn't find it overly eye-catching. I uh, got into a little bit of trouble, turned in, uh, got three smacks to the stick and wasn't good enough. Uh, I think at three to one, that's too short, even though connections are quite um, quite good. Uh, I think last year's race, uh, where a lot of joy, May's runner and Dutch Schultz were second, third and fourth. I think that's the those three to concentrate on. A lot of joy is five to one. It's, it finished fourth in Galway and then ran a crack in the Cesarewitch, which was a much better race in the Curra. A maze runner uh, was second at Dutch Schultz, staying on a third last year. I'd concentrate on those three. They're five to one, ten to one, and sixteen to one. So, I think I might have something small in the three of them. Interesting. Yeah, I, I thought there was one in that Dartan, um, Matthew Smith. I loved the win of it. The, one Curra Derby weekend, uh, Declan McDonough, I think, rode it. Then uh, one over hurdles in Ballinrobe. Sorry, not Ballinrobe, Bellius Town. Um, made all in a three in a three miler there. I don't think it particularly tried in Killarney the last day in the sense that like look, it's hard to know. They they were saying it was lame afterwards. I'm not even sure about that because 
the horse was held up. It needs it needs to be up front. I think I think go away will suit it if it goes to the front and makes use of it. Uh, Finney Maguire rides it. He's won the race twice in the last three years. So, like, talk about a man for a race. He's certainly the one for that particular race. Uh, and I think it should go on the ground as well. Johnny, what did you make of that amateur race? Yeah, I kind of liked um, Shazak, Vinny, but I, I wonder now is the ground maybe gone a little bit. It was yielding to soft at Leopardstown. Um, to be fair, it won well, or sorry, at Limerick the other day, and it was a moderate maiden hurdle. Now he won well, but um, I, I think teed up was a terrible price. Like Fran Berry said that he was in uh, Tremor that day, and the horse looked like he needed, uh, basically needed the run. He looked a bit fat, but I mean, that kind of to me suggests that he does get two and a half miles, but this is a much, much more difficult two and a half, or two miles rather. Um, and I mean, he's, he's, he's even got up three pounds as well for finishing second to Lord Erskine. And um, so there has to be some sort of an angle in the race. Dutch Schultz I put up this horse in the race four and ran well. Um, you mentioned uh, as well, um, Dartan, definitely. If Whiskey Sour came back to Anton like his best, he'd be interested for all that he's been a bit disappointing. But um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be heavily against the favourite. Yeah, Whiskey Sour won the race, what, 2017, I think it was. Yeah. A long time wow. ago, wasn't it? Um, one was a four-year-old, now 10 years of age. That wouldn't be for me, I don't think. Uh, moving on, anything, well, is there anything else Monday that you think we should look at? I, d- I, think, I think the bumper is going to be interesting. Obviously, shoot champagne. Um, uh, I think it's the same connections as shoot first, trained by Charles Burns. A massive eye catcher in Cork. Uh, the jockey was weaving in and out, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, flashed home. Maybe it was a poor race. It's kind of around two to one, five to two. Um, I'd be against Willie's my great mate, look to be one pace in Killarney. Uh, Arctic Gale belonged to Emmett. Um, they won the race last year. So mm-hmm. I'd have it between Emmett's and Charles Burns in the last, but I suppose that's no wild statement. Yeah, I'd, I'd be inclined to go the way you're going on that too. Um, as I say, Emmett won it last year for the Mees. They've another one in it this year. Um, Derek O'Connor on it as well, isn't it? Um, yep. the, the, the other one in that, the Willie one, it's, it's owned by his wife, Jackie. Um, they don't tend to have many stars in those colours now, to be honest. I, I seem to get the impression that if, the, if there's a good one in the yard, one of the big owners takes it up. So you'd imagine it's not a star. It got beaten first time out as well. For, for me, you know, that would be one to, one, to, one to avoid, I would have thought. Pick the other two, I'd say. One of the other two looks the way. Um, looking at Tuesday, Johnny, what about that? Anything for us Tuesday? Yeah, I'll just give a mention to one Vinny running tonight. Um, yeah. Mythology is rated 93, obviously should take a bit of beating, but I think Bid for Chester is quite interesting. 16, 20 to 1. It was a lovely run at the Curra first time out. I like the pedigree and imagine um, the horse has sort of been laid out for this. And as I say, that's a race notable for Dermot Well, not even having a runner, which is kind of reflective of his lack of, of uh, two-year-olds uh, at the moment. Um, so that, that'd be sort of my my main um, yeah, my main one going forward. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating. Are we on Tuesday or Wednesday now? Sorry. I go Tuesday. Yeah, we may as well. It's after Monday. <laughs> Um, yes. Just, just thinking it around Tuesday. It looks, it looks relatively easier from a just first stab at it when you look at it. Smaller fields starting off the day. Anyway, give someone half a chance. Yeah, and I, I, I know. Um, I, I, I do think Absurd is quite an interesting horse in that um, novice hurdle. I thought he was very good when he won his, um, when he won his maiden hurdle the last day, and um, presuming the ground is all right for him. The later on in the card, then Charge obviously making his big beginner's chase debut was very very interesting as well and the the main race is the Galway Mile I, I do quite like Salt and Saul I just think with the, everything's in his favour really I know he's 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 disappointed in the race since he won it a couple of times but I, I, I just thought the run the last year was quite eye catching he's in good nick coming here at ground is um, absolutely fine for him and uh, he's like 16, 18 to 1 I quite like him in the mile the race that Adam McGuinness is nearly half the field in yeah, the, with the way the ground has gone, that Joe Masseria, no meads, that has a definite chance. Loves it heavy. Can't get it soft enough as far as I'm concerned. I have a tiny worry about it over the trip. I personally think it's best over seven, but having said that, it has won here over a mile before. Um, Gavin, what did you make of the second day? In the second day, uh, I'll either back up third or nothing else in the race. It'd probably be even money. Ran very well in Ascot, was second, stayed on behind Boba and off 101. Um, there's a horse running tomorrow called Current Option. Um, mightn't win the Topaz Mile. Is it called the Topaz Mile? No, the Colin Quinn Mile, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It'll win and, on Sunday, don't Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of my horses for later on the week. It's yeah. won the race on Sunday in 2020 off 99, 2021 off 105, last year off 97. This year has a rating of 95. I don't think it quite gets the eight and a half furlongs uh, in the mile race, and it'll probably finish six, seven, eight. But I think that's definitely a bet on Sunday. And also tomorrow, there's a handicap there over a mile. Um, sorry, seven furlong handicap to 750. 
Yeah. Uh, when you go into irishracing.com that I love to use, uh, the most important <laughs> letter uh, this week is the letter after the horse's name. So if you see the little letter C, that's crucial because I think course form in, in Galway is massive, particularly on the soft ground. So when you go to Imposing Supreme, you'll see the CD1. So it's one over course, course and distance. Um, won well the last day in Belliestown. Tom Gibney's horse are in good form. Um, I think uh, it's drawn 13 tomorrow. Uh, personally speaking, when the ground is goal, I like a low draw. But when the ground is soft, I think the draw goes out the window in Galway. Um, I don't mind a wide draw because it's nice to see them swooping around the outside. Uh, Gavin Ryan takes over, and I think Imposing Supreme could be six or eight to one. That would have a chance each way. I fancy one in that race now, I have to say. Plunkett, Paul Flynn, Billy Lee. I love best, the ground. Oh, loves the ground. Runs best fresh. They put him away since the 8th of June. Hasn't had a run. Unlucky here twice before with Billy Lee in the saddle. Billy Lee back on board. I, I think that is a definite chance. Um, lightweight. Well, not, not that light a weight, but bottom weight, I think it has in it. Uh, big chance, I would have thought. Um, what else have we got, Johnny? Anything else on the Tuesday? If nothing else, particularly on the Tuesday, Vinny, no, no, me neither. I thought Plunkett was my only bet of the day, to be honest with you. All right, we'll move on to Wednesday. This is one of the big ones. Uh, Hewick, can Hewick do it? Win a second go away plate, Gavin? What do you think? Uh, I think if the ground, uh, I seen Shark Cannon talking the other day, and he was saying that if the ground was soft, soft to heavy, heavy, etc., he might even run the horse. That the horse wants mm. decent ground. If the if the rain somehow stays away tomorrow night, if the ground was a little bit better than we expected, I actually think I've gone th through this race for an hour, and I was giving Hewick a big chance in it. But I think he's very ground dependent. He's a brilliant jumper, which is crucial in the Galway Plate. Obviously, he won it last year. Uh, he's gone up twelve pounds, but you have to remember he was only four pounds lower. I think when he probably would have won the Kerry National in a stall. So. I wouldn't worry so much with the extra 12 because don't forget the loose horse dragged him across the straight. Uh, but he jumped brilliant in the race. Now he has fallen and he is unseated in the past 12 months or thereabouts. But generally, he's a brilliant jumper. Um, you know, he has to give six pounds to kill Crut. I think he can do that. But just the ground is the, is the thing that is slightly worrying me for Hewick. Um, I think there's loads in with chances here. They're going to travel exceptionally well. Like I backed Lifetime Ambition in the, in the Tri Town, looked all over a winner. Uh, this step down and triple suit him. The same for Fury Road. He doesn't fully affect him over three miles. Uh, you could say the same uh, for uh, Visionarian. And also you could say it maybe Final Orders is a horse I know Johnny likes. Has one over three miles, has one over two miles. Um, Ash Tree Meadow ran a cracker last year to be four. So lots of good horses in it. But I'm going to go for Hollow Games. Uh, carrying 10 stone one. The lightest it's ever carried in its life was uh, the last day, 10 stone 11. So I think the horse will think that he's loose. Um... His four runs over fences were all over two miles and two miles one. And if you watch him in Punchestown, he's basically, he's off the bridey going to the first fence and he, he continued that way all the way around. Um, he has won over two miles six uh, on soft ground and down royal, etc. Uh, ten stone one, the step up and triple really suit. I think the soft ground won't bother him. And the fact that he's only carrying ten stone one, I think he's got as good a chance as plenty of the minute. I really fancy him too. I Do have you? To say. Oh dear. I, have to say, I think he looked like a proper stayer as a novice hurdler. And they haven't run him over a trip at all over fences. It seems astonishing, oh. to be honest with you. And I don't think it's a case that they were coming here with this. This is a plan. I don't think so. He's had wind surgery and all sorts. But I think he's just he's disappointed a little bit. But off 10 stone one, Sam Ewing on him, I think this is made from. Absolutely made from. It'd be lovely to see how he does over this trip because he'd surely stay it. Um, he always looked like when he was a novice hurdler running against some of those top stable companions in graded races, he looked like he wanted further than three miles he looked like any distance to do him so it seems astonishing he hasn't run over it yet uh the other one johnny here for me and this is three of the last 23 winners of this race have carried 11 stone or more including the last two hewick being one of them but generally you're looking for a horse with a lightweight less than 11 stone seems to be the the standard trend in it do you think it'll be booked by either kilcrush or hewick up the top yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about the stats there, except I would worry slightly. Sam Ewing, um, since his last jumps win, he's had 70 rides, hasn't had a winner over jumps. So it's not great prep going into a Galway plate on a horse that doesn't have a lot of experience. But um, 
the race itself, like the the thing with the the ground here is going to be key because, like, I I think that the better the ground, the more it'll offset the fact that the, you know Hewitt carrying a lot of weight isn't a big issue really. It's um, but it will be more of an issue on the ground. Kilcourt for me, I don't know kind of what to make him at this stage. Um, he was obviously very good at Punchestown. Um, I think he'll be possibly a pace angle in the race. Paul Town and his riding him long been held in so in in, in high regard. I, I liked um, in a scary, but the ground is worrying me now because all his forms on good ground, and uh, you know he won at Galway as a novice, and he um, he was brilliant at Leopardstown the other day. But again, again the ground be concerned. Definitely lifetime ambition comes into it. Um, you know he was basically just sort of outstayed by a well in a horse and the big dog uh, that day. Um, I, it's it's a race I have a terrible terrible record in the Galway play to have to save any, and uh, I don't think it's a race to get overly heavily involved in these tough handicaps. Keep an eye out for Astrey Meadow as well. Danny Gilligan just coming back. He's he's been the best value for seven pounds around back at his local track as well. Um, finished fourth in the race last year off 144 run off 145 now so many in with chances here. I, I definitely think you'll have better betting opportunities uh, elsewhere throughout the week. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Well, to some extent, I I do fancy hollow games. So I think what is he 10, 12 to one ish? Yeah. It looks like a fair each way price, I would have thought. And there'll be extra places with some of these bookies on that race as well. So finishing sixth might get you your money back or a little bit more. Um, the other one, Fury Road as well. I think that that has to have a chance, doesn't it? With the with the ground, ground would be perfect if it's soft for Fury Road, and the and the trip is is ideal too. Anything else, Gavin, on the Wednesday? That yeah, stuck your uh, fancy. There's four horses for a lucky fifteen for you there for the week. My God, here we go. Yeah, one of them is current option on the Sunday. Yeah, and the other three all run on the Wednesday. Wow, wow. So uh, the first one is Zimmerman in the six ten. Uh, he's rated seventy eight. He's only had the one run for Willie Mullins. Uh, he ran in the Cora. He finished sixth. Uh, he broke well, but he was held back near the tail of the field. Uh, ran on quite nicely. I think he'll improve a lot. Uh, Willie is brilliant. These staying uh, horses in the flat, and he's in a race uh, not to eighty. He's drawn four. That's fine over two miles. And uh, Immerman, I'm not sure what price he'd be. I'm sure he'd be only three or four to one shot, but um, I think he's got a great chance. Rachel uh, Blackmore in the saddle as well there, I see. Yeah. Excellent. Um, uh, the second one is Ballybon Belt from the 715. Uh, this horse has done me a couple of favours over the winter. A massive eye catch from Fairy House in his first handicap. Uh, finished fifth when, whatever you want to say, not knocked about. Uh, then goes and wins the Paddy Mullins uh, handicap herd at Leprosound at the Dublin Racing Festival off 104. Uh, and since then, ran finished eighth in, in Fairy House and then won in Punchestown when hit the front a long way out. Uh, went six lengths clear, over two and a half miles, ridden by Charlie O'Dwyer and uh, stayed on just to win. Aidan Kelly claims five, it's off 121. And it's uh, in a mayor's handicap hurdle over two miles and a half before long. And the fourth one is in the following race, sorry, two races later, in the seven. 50 is it one second the 820 it's a handicap hurdle over two miles six and uh if this wins we'll do what the name says we'll have one uh trained by william Mullins again uh ridden by patrick it used to be trained by paul townend and jody townend's dad uh, tim and one of uh over fences for willie and then ran a few more times but didn't jump fences very well uh, finished second to carry carroll when i backed it in fairy house uh, in november uh, Carrie Carroll just stole the race that day and, and the horse was given too much to do. Since then, it's come back after a break and it won very well over two miles in Ballon Robe and good ground. That wouldn't have been its cup of tea. I think the two mile six will really suit. Ground doesn't seem to be a problem, so we'll have one at the other one. So the three on Wednesday I like is Immelman, Ballybon, Belter, and we'll have one. Fantastic. Yeah, terrific. Looking forward to this lucky 15 already. Um, right, moving on to Thursday. Big one, the go-away hurdle. Um, I fancied a horse in here for a long time is Brazil of Porrick Roaches, J.P. McManus. I, I think this horse has been laid out for it this season, personally. Um, they landed a bit of a touch with him last year in Cheltenham. Um, and since then, I think a lot, of his, a lot of his form this year is aiming towards this particular race. That's what I feel, anyway. He goes in heavy ground. He's a heavy ground winner in uh, Curra Maiden. He's, he's also got form over jumps and soft ground as well. And he ran on the flat in Killarney the last day over a mile, which would have been a trip way too short. Stayed on at the finish. Thought it's a lovely run. Everything for me points to that. What do you think, guys? Johnny, got a big no, is it? <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, I was at Limerick today at 
Christmas now he was touched mm. off at sixes on or whatever he was that day on, on sort of winter ground. So I, I think in fairness to the horse, he probably is most effective. He was two to nine that day. He's probably most effective on nice ground, but you know, he's one on yielding soft. This is summer soft. Um, I get the run the last day is kind of inconclusive, really, as you say, it wasn't bad and he was run over the wrong trip. Um definite chance, you know, JP has magic tricks in the race, Iker Allen, um, and he, he should likely have Filey Bay as well, who's a horse. I think if you're having a place bet in the race, he's he's the most likely for me to be thereabouts for all that. I don't know if he's answered in hand at this stage. I am going to go with um, Party Central here. I don't know who rides Party mm-hmm. Central, but really good at Belgium Sound the last day, beating Jesse Evans, so that's kind of nice topical form. She's actually, for, for, for all that she's probably been called a few names over hurdles, um, she's actually a very good win record, and I think she's just in great Nick coming here. Here. And uh, yeah, she you got to remember she was fast enough to win on the flat as well in Gorn in April over an ex- extended mile and one. Um, Gordon's horse in great form. I, I think she's going to run very well. Gavin, what do you make of this? Yeah, I wouldn't uh, disagree with Johnny there. Party Central, uh, she definitely mm-hmm. has a strong each way chance. One thing you have to always keep in mind is that the, the mayor's handicap ratings, uh, the seven pound allowance is already built in. So just to keep that in mind, that's all. Uh, I'm going to go for bad news for you, Vincent. I'm going to go for Brazil. Yeah, go on. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, like the day it won, you know the race in Nace. That's a great guide to the Boodles. Yep. Uh, it won that by 13 lengths, and uh, by all accounts, they weren't too happy with the winning margin. And then the talk was that it wasn't going to go to the Boodles, uh, where it beats Gaelic Warrior, which is brilliant form. You have to remember as well that Brazil, as they went out in the final circuit, got badly banged into as well. Um, it won that on 137. Now that was an English 137, but. If you take that literally, it's only four pounds higher up the Galway hurdle. Uh, since then, third in, in Aintree. Second to Champ Kiley was an okay run. It beats Phil Dore, gets beat at Christmas in a two horse race, which was a bit of a joke. Uh, it was an eye catcher under Shamey and Leperson over 10. Uh, ran a punch town, and as you say, ran over a mile the last day. Um, I think the rating of what is it, 141? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, 141. I think that's very fair. Um, and as you say, uh, these connections do like to target the big handicaps. Um, I'm going to give you a second one in it. Uh, let me just try and find it for you here. A horse the one in, um, let me just find it. It won in Killarney the last day. Uh, Mighty Tom, trained by Keen Collins. It's only had two runs for that trainer. Uh, will be held up last, which is not always the best uh, in Galway, but um, it finished third to Seddon in the big, you know the Saturday handicap hurdle over two and a half in Punchdown? Yeah. It's worth a right few quid. Uh, travel like the best horse in the race. Travel right down to the last hurdle. That was two and a half almost. Uh, since then, it's bolted up in Killarney. It's gone from 128 to 139. Uh, Dennis O'Regan perhaps is down to it again, is he? Can you see there, Vincent? I uh, haven't looked at that. We've we've Sorry. no jockeys for that yet, have we? Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, sure. That's, yeah, uh, not that's declared perfect. yet for Thursday. Yeah. You won't get so that we're, tomorrow. We're, uh, we're running on fumes now from Thursday to the end of the week because we're only <laughs> somewhat guessing with the entry. We haven't only given the entries for a lot of the, the races or anything else. We've no but, idea. Uh, that's really fun. Generally, in the goal, we hurdle the go lickety split, even if the ground is yeah. bad. And if they do, if the goal happened to go too quick, Mighty Tom could stay on from the back of the field. I could see him run the big race as well. But he actually to... won. Um, he won when he was with Tom Cooper. He won um, his maiden hurdle. I think he was ridden from the front that day. Completely different tactics. But as Gavin says, he I, I tipped him the last. Day. He really enjoys um, the exaggerated kind of almost non-trying style of Dennis O'Regan. Yeah. And if he can get a break, if he can get the breaks, um, I still think he's probably feasibly handicapped. A lot of ability this horse. Yeah, yeah, and he's 16 to 1 as well, I think, so, or 20 to 1. So he'd have to have a, I think he's got an each way chance, yeah. Yeah, Jesus, it's hard to come from the back and go away in one of those competitive races, isn't it? Just that you've got to weave your way City's through. Tudor City probably trying to do it, Vinny. And that, well, that's, that's a, true, that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember back in Tudor City, I think, to win a three-year-old handicap under Fran Berry in Galway eight years ago. I mean, it's mad to think what he's done. And, like, I, I actually met John Breslin randomly out for dinner there lately in Dublin and he bought our table uh, a round of drinks and and I said you know if Tudor City wins in Galway I'll have to get you back and it, it, I, I can tell he's really really looking forward to the potential to uh, to create history by winning this race three times oh, yeah it'd be fantastic to see that too look there's so many stories going to be all through the week isn't there um, moving on Friday because I can't see much else Thursday myself but just Friday I see an interesting thing what a prep a horse has for a, for a handicapping in Galway, it ran in the Guineas and then the Derby. This proud and regal entered for it's unbelievable, isn't it? You wouldn't you wouldn't normally think that was going to be your route to Galway, would you? Um, anything anyone fancies Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Because we haven't got a whole lot to go on at this stage. 
Uh, there's only entries there for one race Friday, one race Saturday, one race Sunday. Just to go back yeah. to Thursday quickly. Hercule yeah. de Soil will be hot favourite, should probably win. Uh, ground is the only worry. And it'll be nice to see if Enchanto Bruno shows up in the novice hurdle. Uh, he's a decent animal. Again, he may not run with the soft ground, I'm not sure. But those are two nice winter horses, perhaps, that we get to see. And then on Sunday, don't forget, current option, the seven furlong Viano or handicap for the fourth year in a row, perhaps. Well, I have actually made something of a living out of a horse in the same race the last four years is on a session. Comes over every year from the UK. It's been second uh, second three times in the last four years in this race and third the other year. It'll eventually win this, I think. Just I know, coming. she'll beat it again. Well, possibly, yeah, but that, like, <laughs> the ground as well. Presume we're going to get soft ground, which we usually get, so presuming the soft ground is still there by Sunday, I think on a session each way, you can't go wrong. You make money on this every year. Um, Johnny, what about you? Anything else during the week? I see there's another one. Hallowed Star um, Shark has in entered a couple of times. Entered Wednesday, I think, and Saturday. Three wins in two seconds from six runs in Galway. That says enough, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I'm going to give Jack Finbar in the mile and a half uh, handicapping uh, on the Friday. Friday is great night in Galway. I think it's the busiest night of the week, even though the race is kind of probably the lower half of the table in terms of quality. But Jack Finbar, um, I was working the night he ran in Roscommon. Um, Billy Lee rode him. Now, Espionage won the race. Espionage has entered up all over the shop. I think he's going to likely run in the ledger. Um, and Espionage is probably a bit of a class act. But this horse hadn't run in four years. Four years. Yeah, okay. And, I mean, with a clear run, I'm not saying he'd have won, but he definitely should have been a bit closer. Um, you could probably say he's been a little bit unlucky to get hit by the why's he gotten six pounds because like young Ireland was was third, but it's well worth locking at that run back again. And um, he's by Whipper, so I just presume he won't have any issue with uh with this ground. He's he's obviously an eight year old at this stage, but he's only had what 10 runs. Um, and he doesn't actually he doesn't really have have many runs and soft, but I, I can't imagine it'll be it'll be a problem for him being up with that pedigree and trained by Willie Mullins. It was a seriously seriously eye catching run the last day, and as you mentioned, taking on a horse who uh, ran in a couple of classics as well. It's a very interesting race. Yeah, yeah, it should be a good week. Look, all round it's going to be fantastic. And the other thing to watch out for is horses running for a second and third time in the week. They tend to have a fantastic record down the years. Um, look at that. If I have to pin you down, one horse for the week. Gavin, is it is it current option Sunday or would it be something else? Oh, current option Immelman or we'll have one. We'll try Immelman. Immelman, great stuff. Johnny, if you have to narrow it to one. For the entire week, is it Vinny? Yeah. I'll give Jack Finbar. I think it's nice to be it's nice to be have something to look forward to later in the week if it's going a bit awry. And I'll go <laughs> I'll go with Brazil, though I'm I'm tempted to go for Expelliarmus. Uh, on Monday, but I will go Brazil because I've been waiting on Brazil for a long time for this hurdle. Look, guys, it's been fun chatting about it and the best of luck for the week. Hope you make a few quid and I hope those watching make a few quid. And we shall see you all again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.